In the base game of Cthulhu Death May Die, you'll start with one of six episodes to play. It doesn't necessarily matter what order you play them in, as there's not a consistent narrative across each episode. For each episode, you'll set up a map of various tiles, choose a unique character to play, and fight scenario-specific beasties. Depending on the episode you choose, you'll have specific goals that you and your teammates will be trying to accomplish in order to stop the ritual and face the Elder One up close and personal. Each character comes with a player sheet with six different tracks to keep your eye on. You'll place a marker on the top to track the level of madness you've accrued throughout the game. Three more markers will go to your ability tracks, the top of which is unique to your character. No one else will have the same ability. On the bottom left of your character sheet, you'll place a marker to track your stamina, which you can spend to re-roll dice. You'll place your final marker on the health track, and if that ever reaches the skull and crossbones, well, you're dead. Finally, everyone will be dealt one medical file which, depending on how you cope with it, will either help or hurt your team. When your character rolls for any attack, they will always roll these three black dice. Tentacles represent the number of madness you'll gain from that roll. Exclamation marks count as hits against enemies, and Elder Signs, the stars, count as hits but only for certain characters. Eventually, as you increase in madness and upgrade your abilities, you'll gain green dice, which can be added to your attacks. Anytime you roll a tentacle, you'll increase your madness by one. If you roll two tentacles, you'd increase it by two, and so on. If your marker would ever cross a purple space on the madness track, you must stop the marker on that space, regardless of how many tentacles you rolled. Congratulations, you've gone insane. Remember those medical files we talked about? This is when they come into play. The effects of the medical files can be powerful and be the difference between success and failure. Just make sure your companions are safe before you snap. After you've had your little outburst, you'll be allowed to upgrade one ability. Some abilities are better than others, but it all depends on the dynamics of your group. So it's a good idea to strategize with them and then choose an upgrade that works for you. Spending stamina is an essential part of combat, both when you're attacking and when you're being attacked. For each stamina you spend, you can reroll one die to try and get the result you need. Because like you, enemies also have an amount of dice that they will roll to try and take you down. Knowing how and when to spend stamina will save you from a lot of heartache and leave the enemy without a clue or a shot at you. After each turn, you'll draw and resolve one Mythos card. No one likes these and they can devastate you and your plans in an instant. If you see this symbol, it means the other one is closer to being summoned. Drawing three of these symbols will move him further down the track. And that has its own consequences. If you're in a room without enemies after the Mythos card is resolved, you're considered to be safe. If you're safe, you draw one discovery card that may help you, or it can just be terrible. If you are ever safe during your turn, you can do the rest action. Resting allows you to move either your health or your stamina back up three spaces. Each episode also has actions that you will need to perform to try and stop the ritual so that you can make the Elder One appear and deal some damage to him. Once that happens, the Elder One's marker will continue to move after every third symbol is drawn. If it reaches the end, that's game over. Otherwise, you and your friends will face off against the boss with all your fancy new abilities. Most of you will likely die, but what matters is that at least one of you is able to make the final blow. Cthulhu Death May Die is a game about balance. It's about knowing when to send your companions to complete an objective and hoping to come back in one piece. It's about weighing the cost of insanity and death against power and ability. Even if the story between episodes is not consistent, and the episode stories themselves are lackluster, the artwork, theme, and mechanics all make for a rich story you will create between you and your friends, and this adds an incredible replay value. Because the game is difficult and so well balanced, it requires you to be balanced as well. It requires you to think on your feet and work as a group. It makes each player and their abilities a necessity. No one will tell anyone else to do or quarterback because everyone is struggling with their own conditions and pushing their madness to the next level. You're constantly thinking things like, if I could roll one more tentacle, maybe I could sneak past these enemies, but that would put me in danger of dying, but it would get us closer to being the boss. Cthulhu Death May Die is teamwork in the truest sense of the word, and it'll have a shelf life for years to come.